All right, Mike Draco in the house first time. Oh, no, it was Scott Stefano beating Draco by just a split second. Bruno Capolo and with us, Big D in the house. Lisa Ballard, good to see you here. Hey, man, this is Chris with Cycle Source Magazine. We're getting ready to fire up a live edition of Shop Talk every Sunday, 9 p.m. We go live with this show. Appreciate you guys being here. You can do a little more if you wouldn't mind. Hit the like and share button. Help us get this thing all around the two-world universe. I want to thank our friends over at Chopper Town and Cycle Source for helping carry this this feed along with all of our other ho- our sponsors. It's going to be a rough night, but we're getting started. We're almost ready. Shop Talk going live in three and a half. Stick around. Scott, I just caught that you keep putting up that comment of Chris 2024. Can you imagine what a mess that would be? Oh my God, I'm not qualified. <laughs> Everybody would have to have a motorcycle. It could be a, a Go Green initiative. <laughs> Pat Fitz from Godfrey, Godfrey, Illinois. Hey, you guys, wherever you're watching from, put up your town name so we can give you a shout out. It's always great to see. Uh, always great to see um, where everybody's watching from, especially with Chopper Town Power in this thing, because we get people from all over the world. It's always killer. Lindsay Haletta, good to see you here. Greg White, Gus Gus in the house. We're under three minutes. Going strong towards the start. Shop Talk going live in two and a half. Jason Holman, Lakeland, Florida, watching tonight. Roy Martin. Roy, it's so good to see you. Roy from Roy's Toys is in the house. Mulkey Town, Illinois. Jay, it's good to see you here. Man, it's always fantastic to watch a parking lot fill up before a show. And this is going to be a great one, man. You guys are waiting for those those uh, King of the Bagger results. We got them. We got ta- stuff to talk about. Meekum. We got the new Harley to talk about. It's going to be killer. Two minutes. Two minutes. We're going live in two minutes with Shop Talk. Stick around. Tom Banks in the house from Pittsburgh. Mr. Banks, we need to get you on the line tonight and find out exactly how in the hell knuckleheads were going for such a price at Mecham. Call in. Heather sent you the link. We want to know. At this point, I'm never going to get a knucklehead if they're going for that much money. Are you kidding me? down on a minute now i just want to remind you guys this is not a one-way proposition don't just sit there and be an observer get involved you can comment wherever you're watching this from whatever social media channel you can put your comments up we'll try to get to them questions comments concerns throughout the show um just try to be polite to your neighbors 44 seconds 44 seconds left i guess that means it's time to get this one out of the shack and up onto the tracks Let's go live with this week's installment of Shop Talk. Here we go. Okay, scooter tramps and chopper jockeys all across the land. It is exactly 9.01, closest I've been in a long time to starting on time, <laughs> and I'm going to take that one. It's time for Shop Talk. Coming to you live from the Source mobile unit, right right at street level, actually. 
through the courtesy of the Dennis Kirk Motorcycle Studio. It's good to have you guys here. I'm Chris with Cycle Source Magazine. I'm going to be your host for the next 90 to 120 minutes of all the bullshit we can fit. And uh, crazy week, man. Like I said, knucklehead's going for mad, mad money. But before we get into all that, I'm going to bring the whole crew in and see what everybody's up to. Hey. Oh my God. Hey, what's up? Hey. Dude, is it Medea in the house? Or hey. <laughs> Poor Heather. I, listen, if, if, if ever. Everybody knows our story. You know we go around the clock. It's crazy. Poor, look at poor Heather. Look what I've done. This this poor girl. <laughs> What's wrong with her? She looks fine to me. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> she looks a bit like Heather. Oh, I'm a mess. It's okay. Like you can't see the bottom half of me, but it's like reindeer pajamas and. <laughs> Well, nobody said we had to wear pants. Oh, Scott Stefano says you look marvelous. Marvelous. Oh, thank you, Scott. You're so sweet. So, yeah, crazy week. We uh, ran down and back to Florida, hit Panama City real quick, did some oh, yeah, stuff, just... launched a brand new show, which was killer. I know. If you guys are, uh, are not in the know, let me try to bring that up real quick. There's a new show and a new publication coming along with it called Torque Performance. Not in the know. Yeah, if you're not in the know. It's a new line. line So Torque Performance is a uh, brand new media outlet. Um, Some killer, killer guys behind this stuff. And, you know, obviously we're helping put a shoulder behind it. But let me give you a little taste of that real quick. Thursdays at 9 p.m. you can tune in for this. And the official launch party of the first issue will be in Sturgis. But check this out. that is my favorite tagline in history i can't tell you how long i've been waiting in my life to use that horsepower is what you brag about but torque what you ride oh, everybody's you very excited about that i new know i know and it, it went really well i mean you know first first time jitters for the two guys that were the host jason holman and, and john from hardcore but I, i'm sorry they knocked it out of the did. park they absolutely like, did seriously i wish like we should probably have our stuff together as well as they did like they had a system down right out of the gate like they He's, made us hey, all look bad. are you saying we don't have our stuff together mark it's us come on now i know that's what like, makes it so perfect i resent that we've been this way for what 20 years what 25? you want to change, know, you want to change ever, that now so if we ever actually get it together and <laughs> people it think works, something's totally one right. of us is gonna die <laughs> dude did you really just say that out loud <laughs> Well, that, oh. she's golden because that's never going to happen. So let's, let's right? move on. So, hey, listen, if this is your first time watching, um, this is Shop Talk, powered by Cycle Source Magazine in Chopper Town. We appreciate you guys being here, coming to you live every every Sunday, 9 p.m., through the courtesy of the Dennis Kirk Motorcycle Studio. Um, what is it? 90 to 120 minutes of two world entertainment. We bring some guests in. We have a few laughs, but the whole thing starts off with a little program we call the news. First up in the news tonight, and yes, we're going to do this and get it out of the way for you heathen bastards that just can't wait. Moto America, King of the Baggers, race results from Road Atlanta are in. This is coming to you from Road Racing World and Motorcycle Technology uh, on behalf of Blood Lubricants. And there it is. Number 29, Tyler O'Hara on the Indian. The Mission Foods SNS Cycle Indian Challenger taking the win just ahead of Kyle Wyman on the hd screaming eagle bike but look at that indian harley indian harley 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 it's uh it's not like everybody you know there's there's been all this talk about indians coming for harley and it looks like it's a pretty pretty good race going on yeah i don't know that's uh that's impressive how small or how how soon it is that this is all happening and it is man it's killer i think that's fantastic well, we're going to talk about that a little bit more um, later in the show because we have a, a guest that can speak on that way more intelligently. I think he than knows a little bit us. something yeah, about yeah, that. Yep. You think? Yep. He knows a little, <laughs> a little maybe little a little more about it than we do. Uh, yeah. 
So Nancy Weems says hopscotch. I can't wait to talk about this. Those guys did great. First time out or not, Greg White's giving comments and kudos out to Jason Holman and and John. Next up in the news is Royal Enfield. And man, this is a company that just week after week is back in the news. Now it's for a um, new yes. trademark. They're Said filing they're, for they're shocking. They're gunning, that's for sure. Yeah. Really impressed. I got to tell you, like yeah. I said, I've, I've told you guys time after time when I first rode the, the, the GT650, I wanted to hate that bike. I wanted it to be a shitty project, product like the last one that I rode, and it, it absolutely wasn't. I was totally surprised with it. And I mean, in all honesty, for the most part, as much as you say you love two wheels, you want to hate everything that's not a shovel head, a pan head. <laughs> that's not true. I'm, I, I fashion myself to be a renaissance man. I, I'm, oh, renaissance man? Right? You don't go to those festivals wearing funny suits, do you? No. All right, just checking. No. Let's let's just... Okay, well, listen, before we get too far into this and, and too far out on a limb that we can't come back from, we're going to go to our guest tonight because uh, he was nice enough on moment's notice to jump in here. So very, very proud to bring Mr. Paul James in from Harley-Davidson to talk about the new icon that is tearing up social media. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's looking at this. Everyone wants one, and uh, they're going quick. So let's go to our first guest. Paul, how you doing? Hey, Chris. This is fantastic. Isn't, like, this is the coolest thing. You know, all the bad stuff that you can say about COVID, everybody can do Zoom now. Like, the yeah. technology has moved and, like... There's no excuse. <laughs> it's true. I mean, obviously, we'd rather be seeing each other in person. You know, missed you at yeah. Daytona Bike Week and, and uh, Sturgis last year. But uh, to be able to at least see people's faces and, and interact this way, it's not, it's not so bad. It's not. It's not. I <clears throat> I thoroughly support the information age. And, you know, as this stuff was coming on, you know, we've been doing shop talk for almost six years now. You know, from the minute that Facebook launched the side by side interview, we were like, oh, man, we could do so much with this, you know, and like just to watch it blossom in the face of such such adversity through covid. It was a blessing. Yeah, it gives people something to do, too. I mean, uh, you think about what we did on screens in this last year. We yeah. actually had some things. We just learned new ways to entertain ourselves, especially during lockdown. Well, and there was little choice, too. After everybody finished Netflix, it was like, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> So the news is out. Um, man, I can't, even, I, can't even, I can't even believe this motorcycle. Can't even believe it. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're, you're talking about the Electrical Light Revival. Yep. Let's yeah, go. we're share it with the world. We're yeah. going to go to some pictures now. Yeah, Just, take a look. So tell me where this comes from, because you guys have been, you know, really going after new technology, electric motorcycle, yeah. you know, outreach in every direction, the Pan America, the, you know, the, the talk about the Street Fighter and, and everything else that's going on. But then, like, seriously, a, a left cross you know, right across the bow to everyone that had any question about, you know, does Harley still know where they come from? I yeah. think this is this is a, an undisputable answer to that. Yeah. Well, the, you know, the beauty about Livewire and the Pan America and other, you know, fresh new products that we have debuted is that they're and they're not, you know, they're not uh, taking the place of our desire to be number one in customs and touring and cruisers and the things that we have done for the last 118 years and you know, this new icons collection the announcement of this icons collection concept and the first motorcycle in the icons collection i think puts an exclamation point on that and it's a beautiful bike i mean it, it, let's face it it's it's gorgeous it uh, harkens back to an earlier age but it's a fully modern touring motorcycle and it's going to be extremely limited. You know, there's only going to be 1,500 of these units made oh, globally. Wow. So, wow. And um, they're, listen, they're going to be limited. Excuse my ignorance when I ask this question, but what does that mean per dealership? Like, I don't, I don't know exactly where your dealer number sits now. You know, it roughly will be about one per dealer. Wow. Um, and that's not to say that every dealer will get one. So, you know, it's it's. Um, it's going to be limited. 
Now, before I before I come off wrong about any of the other products, I'm not taking anything away from yeah. from the new products. But with so much outreach, I can I I'm also a, a core rider. You know what I mean? I I come from Harley's heritage, and you know a little bit of me all the time was like, you know, yeah, I know things have to get better. They have to move on. They have to change, but. I miss that. I miss that. I still love, I, I love the, the motorcycle that this was designed after, you know, and I think, oh, yeah. I think that's a, that's a really big thing for bringing everybody in and still oh, identifying entirely. that this is the same, same community. Yeah, entirely. I mean, this motorcycle, I have a very personal memory of, of uh, a motorcycle like this. My, the first Harley that I ever rode was my uncle's 1970 FL, which looked a lot like the electrical light revival. In fact, I, I shot a picture of it to um, uh, my cousin, his son, and uh, he's since passed, the, my uncle. And I basically said, look at this motorcycle and tell me what you see. And and he just, his jaw dropped. He, he was so excited about it because again, it harkens back to an earlier day and era and uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful bike. It tugs the heartstrings, right? Um, for people who, who grew up in that era and, and who knew um, the beauty of that, you know, birch white and, and, and blue FL from, you know, 1969. Absolutely. So we have, uh, we have some questions, actually more questions than I can keep up with. I'm going to try to go back. <laughs> I'm going to try to go back and see, um, there was one that that's asked specifically, uh, you know, with the announcement of the icon program, why this particular one, I think they identified mm. a 1969, why 1969, to to go after the very first one to uh, to replicate uh you know i don't know that we have a i have an answer for that i mean obviously we have a lot of ideas of what will be in the icons collection and we've said you know with the launch of the um of the first model these are going to be annual the one or perhaps two models a year and and we decided to start with you know very iconic uh look and feel of an fl and and uh, it's uh, something I know that Brad Richards, our VP of Styling and Design, has been kicking around for some time. And I guess we just felt the time was right uh, to showcase this motorcycle and for it to be the first in the Icons collection. Is that really who gets the, the ultimate credit for, for this design in this direction? Well, Brad, of course, leads an entire group, right? He has, he has an entire uh, team of, of stylists that work for him, and, and uh, they do a lot of sketch blitzes and things. So, you know, I think he'd be the first to say that, that, that there's an entire team that's responsible for the development of this motorcycle. But certainly he's been a champion for it, and, uh, and you, can, you can see his fingerprints all over it. Yeah. There's, uh, there's some questions that people were hoping that they actually see a two-up pogo seat option. Ah, <laughs> I don't think there is one right now, but I, I, I totally understand why, you know, right. why someone would want that. And, um, yeah, it, that, that's, that solo seat with a spring seat is a, is actually very nostalgic and, and everyone who knows who's ridden one very comfortable, you know, it's, it's essentially the, a, like a police off police motor officer seat. Very, very comfortable. Well, lots of support. I mean, if, if you haven't, if you haven't tuned in to any of our other shows, we also do Coast to Coast with Chris Simmons and Michael Lichter on Tuesdays. They talked about it. The uh, Cannonball Chronicles with Jason Sims mm -hmm. and Rob Nussbaum. They talked about it. Like, and and every every day when you turn up social media, it's like every third post, people are giving the company praise for this and everything. You guys got to be really happy. Yeah, we knew people would be excited about it, and and it's just the first in what will be you know an entire series of motorcycles that will be fresh every year. Um, they'll be limited, they'll be numbered, and they'll be special. They'll, they'll all be special motorcycles. So if this one doesn't speak to someone, you know, particularly, or if they don't, you know, if it does and they don't get their hands on one, um, you know, just wait. There's more coming. Well, I'll tell you, I bought a 72 FLH here a couple couple years back. And, man, just looking at it and seeing yeah. these new pictures, the references from point A to point B is just amazing. And to me, that's iconically one of my favorite all-time bikes look-wise. And this just looks so much like it. It's crazy. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. I, and, I, and as I mentioned before, I, I think back to my earliest memories of being on, on my first Harley ride. And it was a bike that looked very much like this, my yeah. uncle's 1970 FL. And, and that's been etched in my brain yeah, right. uh, you know, since, since I was a kid, since I was nine. And I wanted my own <laughs> Harley so badly. So when this thing came out, I looked at it too. And I was like, oh, there it is. Yeah. It's amazing. You know? And you're right. There's a lot of influence. 
and a lot of connectivity to uh, to that heritage. And it is like it seems like the newer bikes, not not taking from them, haven't really got boxed up or anything like that. But there's just something about the flow of these mm-hmm. that, like you said, brings you know brings me back to the the first couple that I really checked out and you know really liked and made me want to ride. And it was probably around that age. You know, so, that's yeah. that's one of the things I have to say about this too. One of the things I'm super surprised about is with. The manufacturing process of of a motorcycle manufacturer today, I'm surprised that it and and I don't I shouldn't say I'm surprised it was this easy for you guys to achieve that look because <laughs> it may or may not have been. But I'm, I I'm surprised how well I'm surprised how well you could do that on a modern platform. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm shocked. It, I'm sure it was hard to come back to this. You know, yeah. it probably wasn't an easy design change, but as easy as you'd think, it being an old design i'm sure it wasn't easy to come back to that right right well you think about it you think about the the problems that the engineers at our product development center solve a lot of what they solve is packaging a modern motorcycle in very classic designs and i don't think they're given enough credit for the creativity and the innovation and the the hard work it takes to to carry forward very classic and and uh, soulful heritage into a very modern motorcycle. It, they, they are unique challenges. And I, I honestly think that uh, they've been underappreciated and, and kind of, uh, uh, let's call it, uh, you know, skeptical about products that we've introduced that are more modern. If we could really engineer, let's call it, you know, a competitive adventure touring bike yeah. or be the first major manufacturer with a, with a full plug-in electric. And I'm sure, I mean, a lot of the, the people that tune in, a lot of the guys we know that build and stuff like that see the difficulty, but uh, the average person that walks into the dealership, I don't think understands the the difficulty that it comes for the transformation from the old style to the new style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it is a big transformation. Yeah, I totally get that. Yeah, well, I, I, for, I for one, definitely... <clears throat> want to give them all the kudos in the world you know i know sometimes we're like like mark saying you know we're we're old bike guys and we sit there and we go ah man why are they doing this yeah. or you know as much as as much as we complain about anything we still bleed black and orange you know it all begins and ends there so to see oh. something like this too now is just man it's so good I think the only thing that I find sad about it is that there are only 1500 and I understand, I, I understand that, but on the, on the selfish part of me, I'm so sad that there are only 1500 cause I know that the chances of us having one are, are all that much slimmer, you know, but I won't go with that because that's just going to raise the value of my 72 FLH, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's, there's truth to that. And, and, you know, if you think about it too, you, you know, it's a, it's actually a very attainable, very limited edition motorcycle. Um, you know, if you think about where custom vehicle operations uh, pricing has gone, yeah. you know, those are, you know, those are very beautiful and limited motorcycles as well. Uh, but they're also pretty mm-hmm. expensive because of all the premium components and content and finishes and those kinds of things. So this is a more attainable limited edition motorcycle. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I don't think, I don't think there's anything that, I or anybody I know would change on it. Yeah, that's that's right. The way it comes from you is perfect. That's funny that you say that because that's I I was surprised to hear how many how many of the guys that we know from, you know, from the chopper part of things or the custom side of things that have said that same thing that like, you know, you you literally you literally wouldn't have to do anything. But it's got that that timeless style to it already. I mean, well, that's what I was saying, like to look at my flh and say because we were just saying the other day it i wouldn't even touch the paint and it's original you, from you 72. probably you probably need to touch the paint on that 72 you i'm shut just your I'm, mouth. I'm saying like why does everything have to be shiny to you just leave it alone it looks good shiny bikes matter mark no they do I'm just not saying. but anyway that to now you know you built a new bike with all the new performance and all the new technology yeah, and all that stuff and yet you still grab that old look to me you know i love the shovel I love the hard ride. I like, you know, sometimes I question if I like to ride and break down a lot. But, you know, this takes it away. You still get that look. You have the ability to ride across the country oh, on the it. M8. Like, yeah, honestly, big, like, major what, bike. what a what a difference. Yeah. What a difference even moving from twin cam into M8. And right. Incredible. Mm-hmm. So tell us um, from street level, 
You know, these things hey, we're on street are, level. are they are they are they literally in customers' hands yet? Is there is there in, been any feedback? Uh, my understanding is they are shipping um, immediately, so I don't know uh, if any are in customers' hands yet. But they're going to be in dealerships very soon if they're not already there. Um, if you haven't, you know, reached out to your local dealer to see if they're getting one. And if you really, really want one, you should be making that phone call probably a, a week ago. <laughs> but hopefully, um, you know, if people are out there and they really want one, they can find one and and get their hands on one because, like you guys just said, it's it's got that timeless yeah. look. But it's wrapped up in the modern, you know, Milwaukee 8 114 powertrain. Uh, it's got, you know, the the suspension that's so comfortable, and it's got, uh, you know, RDRS and all the, the, you know, the rider safety enhancements. It's, it really is a thoroughly modern motorcycle that looks like it just, you know, popped in from the time machine from 1969. Yeah. So Chris Simmons is uh, on here, and she says that she's talking herself right into one. Um, Walter Coro is asking, will they sell other colors if ordered? No, this is the only color that's going to come in. So it's only available in this colorway, and there's only going to be 1,500 of them. So this is it. Right on. Right on. Well, listen, um, we're going to we're gonna hop real quick for a, a short, short commercial break. Will you please stay with us on the other side? We would like to talk to you about the Pan America real quick. Yeah, sounds good. Awesome, man. Hey, this is Chris with Cycle Source Magazine Shop Talk, and uh, we're coming to you live through the courtesy of the Dennis Kirk Motorcycle Studio. Don't go anywhere. We're going to pay some bills real quick and come back on the other side and talk to Paul James some more. So stick around. Everything we do at the track shapes what we build for the street and the dirt. You can see how bad these guys want it. The race to the line. For us, racing is not for the trophies or the glory. We compete because it makes everything we do faster, more durable, and tested to a higher standard. For SNS, racing is the ultimate in proven performance, and we've been proving it since 1958. Okay, thanks to our sponsors tonight, SNS and Twin Power, for uh, helping us keep the show on the track. And um, great talk tonight. We were talking about the, uh, the the Harley Davidson Icon program. I actually want to bring Paul back in for a second um, before we wrap that up and move on. So um, you're you're saying the Icon program one possibly two a year. Everyone is asking for hints for what's next. I know that's not even possible <laughs> for you to say, but is there? Is there any indication about what the timeline might be for the next thing that, that might be announced? No, actually not. Um, I, I can't really reveal anything about future products. It's the, uh, the yep. first question that everyone <laughs> asks me when they find out what I do for a living. And uh, uh, oftentimes journalists ask the same question, but I, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I can't. 
No, Can't absolutely. talk about future products. I, I, I knew what the question was going to be, but or what the answer was going to be to the question, but I still had to ask it on behalf of the listeners. But uh, Yeah, I get it. I get it. Well, there was a time when we, we kind of revealed a lot of our, our future thinking, and, and we've kind of gone back full circle to say, you know, we're not really going to reveal for competitive reasons. And uh, just for excitement, too, just to kind of keep people guessing and, and keep the excitement going. Absolutely. So I was talking a little bit about the, you know, the different outreach pro products that you guys have been, you, you've been doing so much this year. I mean, everything with, with HDTV, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. You guys have been killing it with media. You've been killing it with new products. But one of the big, other big products that everyone is talking about seemingly nonstop has been the Pan American. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is a handful to unpack. So where, where mm -hmm. do we start with this bike? Well, you start thinking about it, this, the form factor and the idea of Harley Davidson entering the adventure touring space was something that we first talked about in 2018. So it's just super exciting to be here now and say they're shipping in May in the U S. Yeah. So, uh, I guess the first thing I want to just remind everyone is this is a completely all new motorcycle is starting with a completely all new powertrain in design and engineered and built in Milwaukee, the revolution max 1250 powertrain is a gem. It is a beautiful uh, motor that makes 150 horsepower and 90 foot, 94 foot pounds of torque, and it's a ripper. And at the same time, uh, it, it 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 revs you know quickly as well as it's docile at at low RPMs as well because of the variable valve timing technology. So it's it's a really easy bike to ride at slow speeds and even off road. And at the same time, when you open it up uh, on the road, it it will it pins your ears back it's a super exciting motor and uh married up to an all-new chassis and an all-new motorcycle that's designed to really perform well on road and off road and uh just got back from from about 12 days of riding it in the mojave desert and i can tell you um firsthand the thing is so fun to ride uh in all terrain it's it's really a fun motorcycle all right i'm on his job yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I have to say this on your behalf before we go further into that. If you think, if you don't have the privilege of knowing the, the gentleman that we're speaking to tonight, and you think at all that he has a teleprompter in front of him, <laughs> yeah. and he's talking about those numbers <laughs> without having seat time, I assure you personal yeah. firsthand knowledge i have ridden many many miles with this man and he is not joking if he tells you something's performing for real he knows the limits of it yeah we've been on a ton of uh, of model launches and stuff with paul and he gets it i mean flat out i appreciate that chris you know i'm a rider <laughs> yep. and you know i actually i celebrated my 23rd uh, my 23rd year with harley davidson wow last week. right on yeah my first press launch was I, I came to the company in the uh, spring of 98 and my first uh, event that I planned was the, the, the press launch for the Twin Cam 88. Wow. So it's, uh, it's been an amazing ride ever since and I've uh, worked in a lot of different parts of the company and including I ran the 110th anniversary in Milwaukee and I worked in product development for several years, was on the go-to-market team for Livewire and and now I'm back in PR, and that's what I love to do is, is ride with the journalists and, and media influencers out there and, and be able to share information with the world about what we're doing. Yeah, it's, it's no joke. When, when we used to go out, you know, for people who wonder what a, a proper model release is, you know, Harley-Davidson ran some of the best of them. And, I mean, when we'd, we'd get out, they would take us into challenging terrain mm -hmm. and let us see what these motorcycles did, man. It yeah. was never, never a disappointment. Was Paul there when he rode the V-Rod cross-country? Yes, it was Paul that gave me the keys. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, one of his favorite stories, yeah, I'd Paul. like to thank you for the next five days of that, too, by the way. Just, just <laughs> That was a fun event, uh, Chris. You remember, you know, we, when we launched that motorcycle, the first thing we did was we had journalists shoot that thing down the track at yep. uh, Irwindale Speedway and the, uh, and basically ride her full throttle. And you know, Willie G was there. It was really special. I think about all the moments that we've had launching new motorcycles, and and the reality is we, we're sharing them with um, you journalists, so you can share them with the world and, and yeah. reach your audiences. And it's a it's a it's a fun part of the business. It's fun to be able to be part of new product launches. I think cool. in those in in those uh, in the V Rod Muscle launch, we were we were hitting like twelve second quarter miles. 12, yeah. 12 or 14s yeah. anyway, but it was, man, it was, it was a fast track that day. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. So Sometimes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to reminisce. Let's let's go. <laughs> no, let's go back to this motorcycle. He's oh. been there for 23 years and done all these product oh. launches. He, but he's also been a part of of out of motorcycling history. Yep. Yeah. And oh, yeah. what a great thing to be able to say. What a great exclamation point. And and apparently he really knows <laughs> his business because he's been at Harley for 23 years. So. Obviously, he knows what he's talking about because they wouldn't have kept them for twenty three hey, years. So, the bad right. thing, the it's bad nice thing to have is, somebody knows what they're doing. The bad thing is, and I'm gonna t- I'm gonna tell you guys to think about this. Think oh, about twenty three years, not not just to having to deal with us because poor Paul, the first one of the first <laughs> press or, press or model launches that I got invited to, we were halfway through the day when he looked at me and he goes, Chris. Are you wearing a novelty helmet on one of my motorcycles? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> But that was just me. Imagine this poor son of a bitch with, think of the journalists that we've known oh, in the yeah. other magazines over 23 most, years most that he's had to put up with. Well, you're just a hot mess in general, Chris, so I can only imagine. <laughs> and as for the novelty helmet, luckily he had one on. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, I was I was never so embarrassed in my whole life, though. I was just huh. like, um, and terrified, too, uh, because yeah. I'm, you know. I'm like, man, am I going to have to ride back in the truck? <laughs> well, I mean, there's some characters in this business. You know them all, Chris. Oh. And uh, I've got a lot of stories, but I probably can't share them here. Sometime over a beer, I'll tell you some of my favorite journalist stories. Yeah. There's some good ones. I was there for a couple of them. I was there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go back to this motorcycle. So tell me. When we get to ride one, I want to ride well, one. Oh yeah, of those. I definitely, Man. I definitely want to ride yeah. one, and I'll tell you That's why. Super cool. I'll tell you why I say that because when I think about, when I think about the motor company producing an adventure bike, the only and I've said this before on the air, the only thing I have to reference is the Buell Ulysses. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I, that I, was a great motorcycle. It, but it wasn't. Let me tell you, it was. I owned two of them myself. Put a lot of miles on my Ulysses. Love that motorcycle. But it wasn't designed from the ground up to be an adventure touring bike. And there you go. Seventeen-inch wheels. It had limitations off-road. It was a great sport touring motorcycle. A great kind of broken up back roads, um, broken up pavement. You know, back roads bike. Uh, but in terms of this bike, th- this bike was designed from the ground up to be, you know, on-road, off-road performance. And uh, we did a lot of testing and development and design work to make sure that it, it, it works as well off-road as on. So it's definitely the real deal. And it goes head to head with everything that's in this business. And, and you know, really the, the king of the market right now, the GS, I think it, uh, it's definitely, uh, it's got the GS covered. Well, that's, I, I kind of wanted to hear from you, like, have you had competitive riders um mm-hmm. feedback on that have you had them on this bike somebody that's coming from the, the BMW, yeah. bmws and stuff and what's that yeah, like yeah it's it's really <laughs> interesting because when we started um the development of the program we did a lot of consumer research actually more research than we'd ever done in the company's history to understand the market understand the customers and we did it globally and one of the things we learned was that there's a fair number of harley davidson owners who also own adventure touring bikes yep. so they would have an fl or a, or a dyna or a soft tail in the garage and they'd also have a gs or a ktm or something else so we understood there was a big opportunity with those customers but the main thing we wanted to do is make sure that we could compete you know head to head against the best in the business so you know we we rode all those bikes and a number of uh, harley davidson employees whether they be uh, in the design and the development team or test riders at Arizona, Arizona Proving Grounds or others, were dedicated ADV riders who also owned those products. So we understood what the benchmarks were. We talked to customers around the world about what they loved about their bikes, their adventure bikes, and what they didn't love. And we went to work. And I, I, we built a very credible motorcycle to compete against the best of the business. You know, and it's, it's funny that you said that about... Um you know harley riders the the harley riders having more than one motorcycle and some of them having adventure bikes because even in our own staff and this is this is the guy like i was asking jen about us getting an opportunity to test one of these bikes because one of our staffers is chopper charlie this is charlie charlie Mm -hmm. has ridden that motorcycle over the swiss alps all over hell's half acre 
But Harley or Charlie also has an adventure bike. He mm-hmm. also has a BMW. So he's he's the real deal. I mean, he's a, a younger guy. He's he rides aggressive no matter what it is that he's on. And you know that is that is the customer. You know, a lot of the a lot of customers today, it's not it's not the same picture that was painted of of what the demographic looks like. There's a lot of cross affliction. You know, people that mm-hmm. have a dirt bike, a chopper, a touring motorcycle, an adventure bike. So that's I mean, it, it's brilliant for Harley to understand that and see what that looks like. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it's it's a big market. Um, it's particularly big in Europe and in Asia, but it's a growing market in the United States. And if you think about it, if you're in the U.S. and you're adventure touring and you're out in the boonies, the back roads in the U.S., who's got the best dealer network? Harley Davidson does. And so, you know, we we believe that we have a competitive advantage here in the U.S. with our dealer network and our coverage. And uh, just the fact that uh, we're in this market is, is making people take notice. So I have to I have to put myself in a place of wondering what the meetings were like when part of the the inside the factory the inside of the motor company contingent was bringing this product up saying hey you know what would be great if we did an adventure bike because i can't imagine it was just right off the bat everybody was like yeah "Yeah, that's awesome well you know one of the things that we learned um when we were doing research for livewire and this dates back to the original project livewire was when we started showing form factors of electric motorcycles to people and, and to our own customers um, we learned that we're given a lot more credit and a lot more opportunity to broaden uh, what what it means to be a Harley Davidson motorcycle uh, than we maybe understood. And so that that was an awakening where we started to think about what are the things that we know really well that, that we could enter other markets and and spaces beyond custom cruisers, beyond touring. And of course, you know the biggest part of adventure touring is touring. And so we know that we, we understand touring, we understand the touring mindset, and we just had to learn the off-road, you know, ability and the back road ability of these types of customers. And so we studied it very carefully and we had, you know, a bit of an advantage by coming in as a clean sheet. We could design a motorcycle that we felt, you know, met yeah. the needs and exceeded the needs of these customers in the space and put our own touches on it. Having a fully exposed V-twin, you know, uh, engine, um, the fit and finish that we bring to the table, the design language that's that's unique. Uh, those are all things that we knew would be competitive advantages as well as all new technology. You know, if you think about this adaptive ride height technology, the hardest thing about riding an adventure bike, even for taller riders, is the seat height on these bikes. And that's required for a, a long travel suspension. With this adaptive ride height technology, you can have seven and a half inches of, of suspension travel and have it, you know, compress down as you are coming to a stop to put your foot down it gives you back your 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 sag basically and gets you within a 30 inches uh seat height of the ground in terms of a laden seat height so it's a it's a very much a game changer for people who are you know shorter in stature and are uncomfortable with a really tall motorcycle yeah that was that was going to be one of my questions what the what the seat height was because mm-hmm. i totally dig that thing like i said i'm super excited to ride one of those and uh and, but obviously, anybody that knows me, I'm not the tallest guy on the planet. So that was a big concern for me. You're tall in the saddle, Mark. Yes, I am. Very tall. Yeah, I can. I look great when I'm sitting down. Um, but yeah, like questionably, how's a guy 5'7", five, 5'8", five, mm-hmm. going to fit on something like that was mm-hmm. a big concern for me. Yeah. So. Yeah, and so that, that was something that we we heard. Not you know, We heard it from a lot of customers, some that already owned adventure bikes but had to one-foot it. You know, or, or if they were riding with a passenger and fully loaded, they, they knew they were uncomfortable you know, trying to trying to put their foot down, especially in situations where there wasn't much traction, like a gravel surface or a off camber surface. So we understood the opportunity. And so we worked with uh, the suspension, uh, so our suspension supplier, Showa, and we developed um, the software for the hardware that they developed to create a suspension that essentially uses um, inputs like your deceleration rate, the use of the brakes, how hard you're on the brakes, um, to determine you know when to actuate and lower that motorcycle. It's so seamless. You don't even feel it happening until yeah. you come to a stop. It's predicting when you're gonna bring your foot off the foot peg and then it lowers so wow. seamlessly wow. that it, you don't even realize it. It's it's really incredible. It's a cr- incredible technology. You know, it, it's funny while we're while we're sitting here talking, there's a whole conversation going on in the comment box. <laughs> and uh, as soon as somebody asked uh, Rob Nussbaum asked, "How does that weight stack up to the competitors?" Um, we didn't even get a chance to ask you that question until 
where is he greg white answers um that's almost 40 pounds lighter than my v-strom so there's there's part of the answer right there <laughs> yeah well it's it, so the, the the weight is competitive you know the 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 pan america 1250 is less than 550 pounds wet and you know when you add you know, certain features like the the cast wheels uh, the cast laced wheels uh add a little bit of weight or the adaptive ride height adds a little weight i mean it still puts us in the neighborhood between 550 575 which is very very competitive in the space and also i'll say that uh, the bike carries its weight well very low center of gravity it's an extremely easy motorcycle to ride and very intuitive when you're riding an off-road I, I wouldn't call myself an extremely experienced off-road rider. I, I have ridden dirt bikes. I grew up on, on dirt bikes before I had my my, my uh, license, um, but I haven't spent a lot of time off-road since. And to be able to go through uh, and do what we did out in the Mojave Desert, that says a lot yeah. about the motorcycle itself, the electronics that are on it, and its abilities to make you feel more confident and to, to provide a uh, you know, very confidence-inspiring ride. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Obviously, I have to ask the next question. What what can we what can we talk about the Street Fighter? Ah, uh, well, again, future products. <laughs> Damn it, <laughs> future product. I can't talk about future products. I know people are excited about it. Oh, I dude, it. I so am. I so want to take that bike for a rip. I can tell you this. You know, the 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 um, Revolution Max motor. It's it's too good of a motor to only be in one motorcycle. So I'm sure. That uh, you'll see some other other motorcycles down the road with this powertrain. It's it's a it's a gem. Now, can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Because the fact that it has the the name Revolution and then the addition of Max, can you tell me what the the lineages of that? Can we talk about that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, the Revolution motor. The name first came from the V Rods motor, right? That sixty degree liquid cooled V twin that was based on the engine architecture of the VR one thousand race motor, and was co developed with us in Porsche Engineering Services. Um, so it's a nod to that, but I'll be tell you this, it does not share a single component um, with the Revolution motor. Uh, interestingly enough, it shares the same bore and stroke just by coincidence, um, but it's an entirely new ground up design. It was engineered in house um, at the product development center in Milwaukee. And uh, it's a it's a beautiful motor with some really innovative features and some things that you know we as Harley riders we know and we love like so for example, um, you know, having hydraulically actuated valves that's that's not something that's in this segment uh yeah. everyone else in the segment from bmw to ducati to triumph to others they require valve adjustments on this motorcycle we used what we understood about about hydraulic actuation and and in a high revving uh, overhead cam motor we developed a fully hydraulically actuated valve that uh never needs adjustment and so that's a game changer again for that segment space and um, the other really cool thing about the motor it has computer controlled variable valve timing so again, as I mentioned, it, it enables it to make a lot of torque at, at lower RPMs and be really crisp and clean in the bottom, as well as be a real rubber and a ripper at the high end. So it's a really amazing powertrain. I would I would encourage everyone to um, to go to HarleyDavidson.com and, and just and read up on it because uh, it's it's a fantastic motor. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm really excited about some of this stuff. You know, I I know, like I said, I'm a, I'm an old old chopper guy. I'm gonna. F you know fit comfortably into that category i guess but i like i like technology i do i have a bike that goes on the bonneville salt flats i like i loved riding a four-stroke motocross bike finally when i got it to a motocross track and realized that there was no more panic when i was coming out of a, a turn too short and had to hit a double and you know i love where this stuff is going i love the yeah. technology and then i still love my old pan heads and stuff too but Man, it's it's almost unfathomable. Can you can you imagine twenty years ago thinking about? I mean, I remember when we first hit ABS. You know, yeah. I remember I how crazy you. that was. Yeah, I mean, I, I, what a game changer ABS off road is. So you know, we enable you to shut off your rear wheel ABS, so you can lock the rear tire and slide through corners if you want to. Um, but we also have you know front wheel anti-lock brakes and there were so many times when i was you know navigating a downhill rocky section or if i needed to really i got into a corner too hot and i really needed to slow down that confidence you have to grab yeah. the front brake in the dirt and the gravel and and grab all you can stand and have the motorcycle essentially 
give you all that deceleration without locking the front tire, it's amazing. It's game changing for off road riding. Absolutely. Well, listen, man, it's uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on with us. It's, you know, I can't tell you how much it means that you come and speak on this stuff on our little program. And I can I can say with all honesty, as long as a motor company has you there, we know that they're in good hands and you're going to be you're going to be doing it from a rider's perspective. Right. Thanks, Chris. I really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. Always, and it's great to uh, see you all and, and hang out with you guys for a little bit. And I hope we get to do it in person again soon. And Absolutely. we'll definitely get you on uh, get you on the latest iron so you can ha- experience it firsthand yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, listen, um, as, as soon as anything else is breaking, any, as many times as you want to do this, we would love to have you back. So please feel free to have anybody hit us up and say, hey, there's this coming out, that coming out, and let's let's talk about it. Sounds good. All right, Paul. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. You too. Great rest of your show. All right, guys. So there you go. There is the uh, firsthand information on the Icon program, the Pan American. um, The Pan American. The cool. Dude. That's so great. Really good stuff. Really good stuff that's going on. It really was. Like I said, I'm just really sad the Icon collection is only 1,500. 1,500 motorcycles. Because, like, and I don't know that I've ever said, oh, I want a new Harley before. But that is a new Harley that I think I would buy. You know you weren't letting me buy that motorcycle. Just stop. I would maybe let you buy that one. Oh, boy. Stop. Well, there you go. Maybe. Put the order in. <laughs> we heard it here first. Maybe. All right, so listen, we have, a, we have another special guest coming up, huh? Yes, we do. This was a last-minute guest, and I'm so glad he agreed to come on and do this. Um, we have Tom Banks of Banks Brothers Motorcycles joining us. And um, I reached out to him because I was watching some of the sales prices of the knuckleheads that went across the auction block yesterday at Meekum. And I was just flabbergasted. And I reached out to him and I was like, can you school me as to why a knucklehead would be $200,000? <laughs> and I like, he's going to come on and talk about it because it just, I'm flabbergasted. All right, let's, let's cut over to Tom and see what we can find out. How you doing, Tom? Hey, I'm good. So, you know, not to catch you off guard, but I'm fabricated. It's uh, unlike anything we've ever seen before. Yeah. You know, we, we, the crazy thing about it is the prices started low and then went high. You know, when you're thinking about 36s, generally it would start, you know, the 36 being the highest price, you know, and then maybe the 43 and so on. But in this case, the uh, highest price bikes ended up being uh, 46 and 47, along with the 43, which was shocking to most of us. Yeah, I don't get it, man. Where does it, where where did this come from? How did this even go on? Well, I, I think what happens is if you, you have one fellow that wants all the bikes, and uh, you know people realize that that guy wants all the bikes, and maybe they get into a little bit of a Bidding you know yeah. try to bid them up, but to be honest, I don't believe that those numbers would stand. Um, you know, I, I, I don't. The, the bikes, in my opinion, weren't AMCA correct bikes. You know, they weren't. Um, I don't want to be critical, but to be honest, they weren't real high quality. You know, restorations or anything like that. They were good lookers, but you know, in terms of the AMCA, um, you know, they weren't. They weren't. They weren't them kind of bikes. You they, know, for a, for that kind of know, money, you have to be critical. Yeah, this no, a, absolutely. You now a sixty-five thousand dollar bike to to see those kind of numbers is just you know unbelievable, and I don't think it'll change the market. I think it's an aberration. Yeah. Oh, so I, I well, totally. That agree. was going to be my next question: is if this would now raise the value of other of you know of I, other I people's collections? Like I know gonna... you have an extensive extensive collection. Does that affect uh, what's in your? Uh, they're in the vault right now. <laughs> I'm in a vault as of this morning, so I, I can't hit. You know, honestly, I don't think it changes anything. I think that you had a couple uh, people that Not you know ones. maybe uh, one to one up one another, or maybe some realized what was going on. You know, what, when you think about it realistically, how? Why would the prices get higher at the end? 46 yeah. and 7s, especially 47s, are readily available. You know, 
if that bike was original paint and Elvis Presley owned it, maybe. Okay, but yeah, I'm sorry. I just I I think it was crazy, and I don't think that that market's a real market. I just think that you know you might have had a couple of really rich guys that um, I don't know. Maybe they have you know so, I don't want to be. No, so so Again. what what we were looking it was some like some auction hysteria. This wasn't this yeah. wasn't any kind of indication. Absolutely. Not, you know, when you talk to the AMCA guys, and I probably talked to 10 or 15 guys today, you know, and, and last night, you know, we all agree that what you had was a couple of folks that, um, you know, once, once one guy got the first two bikes, you know, it was on, he wanted every bike and he was going to spend whatever. And I think you have some other people that maybe, maybe they bit him up. I don't know. You know, I'm yeah. not, well, I, I got to agree with you. It was a fluke. Uh, I don't think it well, was Well, if anybody would know too, Mark, I mean, you watch Meekum like yeah, people go to, like like some people go to church. Yeah, I, I love that. I love watching where the numbers all come up. And like I said, I'm agreeing with you. I don't think it's going to stick. I think it's going to curve it for a minute. But it was, I, I agree, it was a guy that wanted to pull all those things in. And there was multiple people that were bidding to try and get one. And it, it, it's going to stick for a minute. I, I bet it's going to raise the price a little bit. But I don't think it'll ever stand that high. It's just, like you said, unless Elvis slept on that thing, that the bike's not worth that kind of money. I'm not cutting the bike down by any means, but you know, like you're saying, knuckleheads. This is a couple knuckleheads that were had too much money in their hand at the time. If you want my opinion. Well, yeah, that, 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 that's put a little bit more bluntly. I was trying to be political. Uh, you know me better than that, Tom. I'm nothing political. <laughs> Today, those prices were probably, you know. A couple hundred, if not three or four hundred percent higher. Right. You know, forty-six is worth sixty to sixty-five thousand. A really nice restoration. They weren't really nice restorations. I'm sorry. Um, a forty-seven is worth you know forty to fifty-five thousand today's market. You know, we're talking about numbers that were just crazy above that. You know, it doesn't make sense to any of us, and I, and I don't. I don't see this the market at all. Well, in, in all reality, it's almost a slap in the face to the industry. Of, you know what I mean? Like, what are they trying to do? They're they're actually jacking up a price of something that you know. Oh, because you know, for, for the next for the next month, everyone you talk to about knucklehead anything's gonna be like, "Hey, bro." Oh yeah. Listen, did you see Meekum? Because yeah, right. Come on now. We got. We're gonna have to <laughs> talk fording down off the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. Not the people in the know. Th those numbers, you, those numbers aren't going to change. If you look at the rest of the bikes in the market, there were there were some really good knuckleheads there. There were knuckleheads there that were better than the than the eleven knuckleheads or whatever it was, and they sold for prices that were at or below market. So, you know, why did this one group of bikes go crazy? You know, because if you look at the rest of the market in whole, you know, at the Vegas, you know, the whole three days. That wasn't the case. You know, yeah, well, that's Keith. Keith Kronoff is Keith Kronoff is even on and says, "Yeah, you know, because there was some some nice like stock Ironheads that were like they were bringing shit. They they were dirt cheap, so it it was a it, it was a fluke. It was absolutely a fluke. You know, we just don't see um, you know, we just we, we just don't see that happen in 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 like that sort of period of time, and that, that you know that's what kind of uh, that's what I think. That's what has everybody caught off guard today was how short of a period of time that was. Oh, wait a minute! I'll bring you into the knucklehead room for a minute here. Yeah, let me get up. Let me get you up to a full screen. We're gonna go around the tour. Of good collection. Tom's got one of the most incredible collections. Yeah, um, buddy. Ben, wait, we're so that? lucky that? to have him here. That's great. Can you, okay, so. I've got a guard dog. Well, it's actually a new kitten, but he's going to be watching these knuckleheads. <laughs> you know. I know his name is Cannonball. He's so cute. His, his, his name's Cannonball. You know, he's uh, look, he, baby. He's hanging out. There's my knucklehead. Wait, go the back. Jinx thirteen. Go back to my knucklehead. Someday. <laughs> that's a beautiful. One. That was in the magazine not long ago. Someday, that's yeah. Good. Someday. Right there. Look. Yeah, I buddy. Oh, nice. I'm going to cover the Rolling Stone. <laughs> and then actually up in 
Rod in this one, so I'm out here tweaking. Oh, uh, nice. Tweaking on that 39 there. I've got the dash off and I'm playing around. But, um, whoa. Well, I know that bike. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you know, Tom's not too far from us. We really need to go down there with our cameras and film for a day or two. I know. I just don't know if I can take it. <laughs> you can wear a bib. Look at that. Oh, Look at dude. that. Oh, my God. That's like heaven. Yeah, that's why I stay here. Right? I think I would sleep house. there. Like, if that was my, my shop, I think I would sleep there, too. My, my house is on the market. I'm I'm done oh. with that fake shit. <laughs> Can you go back to your um your matching cuz you just got you just got one of the other way that way. Didn't you just get one of those one of them's new yeah. to your collection, right? Well, the 76s are both new. That's what I thought. The 71s oh, okay. a couple years. That's the cool beast or 71 right there. That's a really really great bike. That's the FX. I have the deal on the Sportster. That's the FX on 76 and that's the FLH. 76. Nice. Very now nice. We're panheads. Tom, Tom Kiefer said he'll be my support crew whenever I'm filming with you. He wants to come too. <laughs> <laughs> my man. <laughs> Tom. Oh, oh we, we, lo got, we lost you, Tom. We got too deep in the shop. Uh -oh. Uh oh. There you go. Coming back. Maybe not. I don't know. But for those of you guys that don't know, again, it's Tom Banks, <coughs> Banks Brothers Motorcycles. He does have an absolutely incredible collection. I'm going to throw their website up here real quick because um, they do have a virtual motorcycle museum. Um, and they also make, and I'm going to give him this plug, so, um, one of the best shop tools yeah, buddy. that we have ever been fortunate enough to have. And it's the um, Banks Lift, the engine lift. Yep. I actually, Chris and I used it last week to pull out an FXR motor, and I did. I like. I pretty much Heather did it did by it. myself. Heather did it. Whoa! Yep. Big time. Yep. Yeah, That's I mean, it, it was that easy. It was so awesome. <laughs> I'd say he's a new uh, shop kid, but he's he's uh, he's still in training. <laughs> he's so cute. He's is he a Maine Coon cat? He, I saw no, the M just, on his uh, forehead. He's just a found along the road humane society kitty. Right on. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> Are you gonna put him in the backpack, Tom? Yeah, well he is right now, but eventually I'll get him, you know, I'll get him out here with um where he can have the whole place. No, I you meant know, your right? little kitty bubble backpack. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know if he's ready for that. <laughs> then he can try come... he can go on the motorcycle with you. I don't want to traumatize him yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh, uh, so beautiful. So I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask the question. You ready, Chris? Yeah, go ahead. Tom, how many motorcycles do you have? Um, <laughs> I, I I have less than Jay Leno. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's right a good on. answer. All right, buddy. Well, listen, thanks for thanks for coming in and having some talk with us. Um, hey, guys, thanks for having me on. I, you know, uh, I always have a good time with you. It's been, you it's, can come it's been too long. It's been too long <laughs> since we had some time to talk, too. <laughs> well, Chris, I need to talk to you when you get a chance. I want to talk to you on the telephone. So we'll uh, this week, huh? Yes, sir. I'm available. You guys Let's do have it. a great night, and thanks for having me on. All right, man. Thanks a lot, thanks, Tom. Tom. See you, Tom. Bye, bye now. Dude, oh my his God, collection shot, of motorcycles like, makes my knees weak. I was just going <sighs> to say that, like, in my core, I'm like, oh, my God. It's like it's like the Mecca. It's so incredible. And it's only, like, 45 minutes away yeah. from us. So this was an incredible show. I appreciate you guys being oh here. Um, we're a little bit over time. I'm going to play one quick thing to tell you some stuff that we have going on here. If, uh, if you're not very busy towards the end of the year let's go party on the high seas xavier with providence psych works in austin texas your host for the 2021 high seas rally the only biker rally on a cruise ship i'm super pumped and way excited 
to be on the ship this year. But what I'm most excited about is the custom bike that I'm building for one of you guys to win. You're automatically entered when you come on board with us. Let's get ready to rock. So Take it easy. That got really loud at the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So anybody, anything, what Bueller? Do what do you got? That's, like, I feel like that show went way too fast. It Are did. you sure we didn't miss something? That was a, that was a lot of good talk with, uh, Oh, Paul, right? Paul. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh. I'll, and I'll tell you, it makes them Pan Ams. Uh, I never think about new anything and then Pan Ams are cool as shit. Yep. I mean, I'm really interested in seeing one of those things. I actually rode a motorcycle today. Did you? Oh, fucking right, I did. Would yeah, you yeah. ride? Would you ride? The soft tail. Had Shut the, up. Yeah, I'm telling you, it was in the drive. did not. I'm Mark, you hate right motorcycles. I know they're stupid. <laughs> motorcycles are just stupid. No, it's, it's been sitting and it's going to be sold and I don't want it to sit and be, you know, get too much dust on it. So I blew it around the block a couple times. Right on. So, wow. Why don't you ride your ass over here so I could have got proof of concept? Oh, I didn't want Are anybody, you sure I didn't want anybody you have to not know. been invaded by body snatchers? I'm telling you, somebody's next called Dana and ask. I'm telling you, she was upset I left by myself. <gasps> so, you did me. not. I, you I did. didn't. Well, I, I lied. I said I was just going to the top of the driveway and turn around. Da Dana, I want to apologize for men everywhere. <laughs> Mark, oh, there's a jetty. I'm going to put this full screen picture up so that you have something. You can do a screenshot so you can throw darts at it tomorrow. Stupid motorcycles. <laughs> they always get me in trouble. Tom Kiefer says he likes your beard. Thank you, Tom. I love you. Can I get an amen? <laughs> oh, boy. Is Pat Jansen behind him or something? What's going on right now? <laughs> All right, man. So, listen, this is Shop Talk. You can come back every Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Check us out. Uh, through the courtesy of the Dennis Kirk Motorcycle Studio, where we'll do another 90 to 120 minutes of all the bullshit that fits. Till then, thank you guys for sharing some of your headspace and some of your off time with us here at Shop Talk. I'm Chris. This is the crew. And uh, until next week, same chopper time. Same chopper channel. we got to start changing that up a little bit or something, because this by Felicia thing is getting old. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, down, boy. <laughs>